the sun they sound mad, and some they're just bad. We've got lads here that are doing are 20 years old that are on their fifth sentence. I was in the paper when I was like 14, 14 year old boy terrorised his neighbourhood, you know. <laughs> Big boy level. You don't even want to give us the money and that, probably torture you first, smack you up with a hammer in your head or something, or burn your toes with a basically a Bunsen burner. Then after that, if you see our face, then we have to kill you, innit? The morals are all mixed up here. You say no, they'll turn around and say, I want to smash your face in. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's completely unpredictable. You could be standing there talking to a prisoner and someone's had a porky around their head. What are you going to do? Welcome to hell. Aylesby Prison in Buckinghamshire is home to some of the most dangerous criminals in Britain. <laughs> Murderers, rapists, gangsters and paedophiles are housed here. What's frightening is that the oldest prisoners are just 21. So serious are some of their offences that one in five is serving life or an indeterminate sentence to protect the public. Officers engage in a daily battle of wits to ensure they keep control. But they must also try to help rebuild the fractured lives of these young men. Some quite difficult people, really. They're usually people who are doing quite long sentences for quite significant crimes. Um, we've got a lot of historical behaviour to unpick with them. A bit hard when, sort of like 17, 18 years, you've been told this is OK for you to do and then you get arrested, go through the court's procedure, come to us, and then we try and unpick what parents and peers have told them is OK. There are some that just become perpetual problems for us. Aylesbury has always had a fearsome reputation among the prison population. In the world of prisons, there is this thought that Ellsbury is the worst establishment ever, and you know, if you go to Ellsbury, you're met by five burly screws that are just hanging about with a big club, and all that's going to happen is when you get off the bus, you're going to get clumped over the head. Every time a new one comes in, they're nervous because they've heard that there's a lot of gang problems, there's a lot of fights every day, up to four, seven times a day. But in the last year or so, it's quietened down. However, the violent incidents that do take place are very, very serious now. A lot of weapons are used. Pull key around your head, prison-made weapon, in your throat, in your chest, in your head, in your forehead. There's no rules. And it's not one-on-one -on -one here. It could be six-on-one. And if staff don't intervene, potentially, we could have deaths here. The latest arrival is 18-year-old Caspian Hogg. He's been sent over 200 miles south from Lancaster Farms Young Offenders Institution because of his poor disciplinary record. Take a seat there. How many times have you been in prison before? A couple, about four or five times. OK. What's your sentence this time? Four years, due to. Four years, OK. Have you ever used drugs, alcohol, solvents, or any other drugs? Yeah, yeah. OK. Um, what have you been using? Just cocaine, cannabis. That's Just it. cocaine? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK. There you go, Miss Morgan's your personal officer. So there's gang activity in your area, sir? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which gang were you a member of? Stratford Longside. Stratford Longside. OK. Have you got any rival gangs? Yeah, Fallowfield, FMD. FMD? Yeah. What are the issues with them? They're just like opposite gangs that we used to bang against, like fight, fight with in prison. In prison? Yeah, in prison. So it's a prison gang, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. All the time, obviously, sitting in the cell, trapped in that, can't really do nothing, and then when something kicks off, I love it, because it's excitement, isn't it? Just makes your day more go quicker, and it makes it more lively, isn't it, when something goes down. When you're in the moment and you're fighting, bruv, you're fighting to survive so you don't get worked out. So they can come and smack you up, so you got to smack them down before they put you down, innit? 
I gotta put in the work on you. If you die, you die, innit? That's how it goes, innit? That's how it goes. We have gang members from Liverpool, from Birmingham, from London, and they'll be rivals. Some have come from the environment where all they know is fighting. Are they open then, this one? Are they open or whatever? They're, um, they're open. Yeah, the heating should be turned off tonight. But yeah, it's um, a bit hot in there. So, we getting a lot It's a new environment, new surroundings. The first 24 hours being in a new prison is the most volatile time. Um, so, we make sure that. They're settled in and they're okay for their first night here. Gang rivalries mean that scores are constantly being settled. New boys are particularly vulnerable, as they don't know the lie of the land and also need to prove themselves. As soon as an incident is spotted, an alarm is activated. To stop the situation getting out of control, First response officers race to the scene. You got any injuries? No, no, no. No? Was it over? No, 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 no. Oh, come on. No, no, no. Must have been over something. No, no, no. What, people to come and normally just hit you? <laughs> I can tell you what it was about now. The lad has come in, a new lad. The fight he was in last week. I saw them both fighting, both of them throwing blows, both stamped on each other's head. Saying hello to each other. You're right. Yeah, fine. Punched the boot, but um, I think it was anyway. <laughs> it's probably his elbow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, can you not? When you come jail from the roads, it's more violent than when you're on road. Because you're seeing everyone from the roads and all, your, all of them all come together and it's just peak, in it. I've been brought up with a lot of violence in it, but I didn't used to like it. But when I'm not juvies, you see what you see a lot of it, so you just get used to it, and then after that, you just start to like it. You're you're from that era. You roll with them, so obviously, if I see you, I'm gonna crack off your head, innit? Or if it gets to a stent, and I know that you stabbed one of my friends, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna stab you up, innit? So are you constantly looking out for who's gonna join the wing? And yeah, stuff? every day. Every day, there's a couple of them on the on the next thing on Sea Wing, and obviously, if I see them, I'm gonna crack off their heads, innit? Straight away. And all day to day life in jail is not good, you know what I mean? You might be the biggest guy in the jail, or you might be, have the name the hardest, you might have the biggest rep, you know, but you've always got to watch your back. So it's always about, just most of the time, you're paranoid, if you know what I mean. You gotta, like, you're wary, it's more and more wearing, you're wary of what people are up to. Got to watch him. It's not, we're all, we're all criminals, you know what I mean? Even like I said before, right? I, I sometimes look to hurt people. I wake up some morning thinking, right, I'm not in the mood today. I feel like I'm serious. I feel like some days I think, right, I'm just going to hurt, like proper hurt me yet, because I wake up thinking, what's the point? Even though I've got 10 months left, yeah, I wake up thinking, what, what is the point? I might as well just go out there and do something to him. During their induction period, before they settle down, prisoners are offered jobs and educational courses. Those that accept will be able to spend more time associating with others. We've only got three staff in the landing, and we could be unlocking potentially up to 50 prisoners. So this is our sort of, you know, our dangerous time. We have to put lots of guys. But you do get very complacent. You know, the lads are not the same, they're absolutely fine. But, um, you know, you have to wait, be wary, and it's a time to watch. The potential for things going wrong is ever present. Caspian and two other newcomers have forced their way past the officer into another prisoner's cell. The officers can't enter the cell because the prisoners have barricaded the door. The governor of Aylesbury is told that three new arrivals have taken another prisoner hostage on Sea Wing. 
First indications are there's four prisoners in a cell. Four prisoners in a cell. It appears that one of them is a hostage. We're going to deploy negotiators to the cell door, try and start a dialogue, and then we'll take it from there. Well, my life's no. in danger. Now, that's forced us to put someone else's in danger. So that message, that message will get to the governor. Do you understand, yeah? My life's in danger, so that's possible. Yeah, no, so fair enough. All three knew themselves from other jails, um, so obviously pre-planned. And your first concern is to whoever the hostage is. If you don't get the governor, I'm going to rape him. I'll rape him, I'll rape him. I'll rape him. Listen, you don't have to hurt him. You'll get sp people will listen to you regardless. The absolute key role is the negotiators at that door reading the situation for us. Because if we're fearful that somebody's life's in danger, then clearly we're obviously not going to negotiate. At that point, we may actually have to intervene. It's all about the hostage knowing that there are staff out there and just gauging it. Because people say, I'm going to kill you, but are they actually going to kill you? You're not the, listen, you're not the only one. The difficulty I've got is I have prisoners from all over the place and some of them don't want to be here. And what I've got to be very careful about is if we start talking about transfers now, then I will have a hostage incident this afternoon because somebody else will think, oh, if I take him hostage, I can get a transfer. Threatening to rape him and cut his neck. Cut his fucking throat. Neck. Cut his fucking neck. I'll tell you straight now, yeah? What's happening, mate? I'm taking it serious, I don't... No, everything's been taken seriously. It's everything... Trust me on that, it's serious. A crisis command centre has been established by the governor to deal with the incident. It's decided to call in a national control and restraint team. They are trained to tackle situations where lives are at risk. Uh, just seem to have a T-shirt tied round his neck, sat on the bed. They have weapons which include a plastic knife and some broken glass. They're not happy being down here, they don't feel safe here. They want to go back up north, Liverpool, Manchester way. Um, one of them's only been here 24 hours, not even 24 hours. One's been here about nine days, all from the same area. Uh, they feel under duress from uh, the London boys and stuff here. Um, and they've had enough. The prison's own control and restraint team get ready to go in. They'll move if the situation threatens to get out of control. It's two hours since the siege began. Jason Harper is relieved by a second negotiator. She continues to deal with the hostage takers. Listen to me, okay? I'm not going to tell you lies. I've only told you what I know. The 40 degree heat is taking its toll. The, the hostage has lost consciousness. Right, turn him on his side. Turn him on his side. Just tilt his head back to open his airway for me, please. Just, yeah, just, no, yeah, that's it on his Darren side. Darren Wright, Andy, uh, feedback from uh, Julie is uh, just collapsed on the floor. Um, I'm assuming he's fainted. Julie is now talking him through, putting him in the recovery position. The governor is informed of the development. He orders his own control and restraint team to rescue the victim. You've told me you want to come out. I'm just waiting. Once we know how it will happen, things will move on. After three hours, the hostage takers finally agree to surrender peacefully. But where is he? Let me have a look at him. The hostage can you let him out of here? No, he comes out last. The one in the white T-shirt. What's your name? Put your hands on your head. Step out of the cell slowly. Keep going. Caspian Hogg, who led the other two hostage takers into the cell, is escorted to the segregation block. One of them transferred in yesterday. He came from the segregation unit from the previous jail. Um, known for staff assaults, known for violence, known for weapons, known for barricades. He's done it all. He's a northern lad who can influence people quite quickly, so I guess that's what's been done. But we're trying to deal with it, so everything will work out in the end. When we get down the seg, we do a full search. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be taking part in that. Yeah. I'm a seg manager, so we'll see the back the All three will be held in solitary confinement until their punishment is decided. 
we manage some of the more problematic prisoners in the establishment um, if they break prison rules, for example, or pose a risk to various individuals or the establishment itself. They'll reside in the segregation unit for a, a specified period of time. So it's very important for the staff that work in the unit to be able to de-escalate kind of um, angry prisoners and, and get them to see reason and also be very aware of um, behaviour that can indicate further violence. A lot of young lads have said to me they've tried to be um, hard-working good citizens or words to that effect, um, but they found it too difficult. But they're young lads, you know. The prisoners will be punished for the damage they're doing. And I've just been being too good, yeah, and fucking, I don't know, I've just been stressed out in it, so I just thought I needed something to do. And I thought to myself this morning, here's my chance. I'm not in my own. Just do a, do a couple of things in it. That kid who took hostage today, he's probably the only person I don't, I might, I don't like. So I thought, let's get him in it. We didn't do anything to him. He punched me in the face, and I was kicked around in the ribs while I was being dragged around. And then one of them grabbed me from behind and uh, sat me on my bed and held me in like as if he was trying to break my neck and uh, the other two lads were hitting the door with pool balls and a sock um, where they'd smashed my telly up as well. Uh, they used some of the glass to uh, put to my throat, saying they were going to uh, cut my throat. And they told me to get um, down completely naked, take all my clothes off. And they told me they were going to rape me. What happened? Oh, not in there saying uh, we, took, we took someone hostage and assaulted them in his, in his own cell, eh? so and kidnapped them, so you've sent it out to the outside police, innit? So we're just down on the block at the moment. Are you saying you didn't kidnap them? Nah, we just barricaded the door. We never kidnapped them. All these thoughts were going through my head, you know. Was I going to live or I'm going to die? I didn't, know, I didn't know these lads at all, you know. And they were just, and it was just it was one of the most scary things ever. And why did you do that? But obviously, I haven't had a visit for six months and they've moved me all the way up here. So I'm trying to get back up north. I mean, there's only London people here, isn't it? Just obviously, I just want to get back up north. This is, these aren't my jails, these are people. I want to be in one of my own jails. I passed out. And all I remember them was them panicking. Because they thought, you know, maybe they'd killed me or something. You keep doing stuff, something officers do, shit you out. You alright, Liam? Yeah, not bad actually. Had better days down there. One of the young men that's um, in the cell, he's flooded his cell, he's got weapons, so he's using the, the handle off his mop. Give him instruction to hand it through. We're going to relocate him into a new cell where there's no water. That's too short. That's no, fine, still got some more stuff. The prisoner has thrown out parts of the broom handle he was using as a weapon. That's too short. Why did you keep that bit? I know where that was. What? I know where that was. I asked you to throw it all out, didn't I? I know where that was. You open it just from the side, yeah? Just open it a little bit, shoot the bolt, yeah. then I'll kick it open and go from there. Start coming up backwards, slowly, step at a time. Don't turn around, keep facing the back wall. The prisoner disobeyed the order not to turn around. By the time the doors open, all negotiations are finished, we've done all the talking, it's either going to surrender or we're going to have to intervene. Stop struggling. Stop struggling. Yeah, if you do anything other than what I ask you to do, you're going to be restrained again. Do you understand that? Yeah. Jolly good, right. Take a moment like this. Understand? Carry on. We rarely use the force of what's necessary to be proportionate to the circumstances, but it does hurt. And it's a uh, full search, please. He'll now be strip searched in case he has any hidden weapons. Fucking 
Do you have any uh, complaints about the way you've been treated? No, no, no. no. Okay. What well, I'm asking you for now is to think about consequential your actions. So you need to think about the right approach if you want to transfer, okay? Because I expect you to get in your bed and go to sleep. So okay. We've got to keep them and try and manage them in the segregation unit for quite a period of time. Otherwise, as I say, people will be just taking people hostage all the time, thinking it gets them a move the next day. The mess made by the hostage takers is cleaned up by trusted prisoners. I've gone the easy way, haven't I? I've made this sentence as easy as possible. It's what you make of it. If you're a dickhead the whole time and you're, you're going to be down the block, nickings, no social, no TV, that's shit. Well-behaved prisoners help run internal services. This gives them much more time outside their cells while they're working. Josh is in charge of laundry in the segregation block. Stinks. If good is good, then good is bad. They're fucking us over. While in the segregation block, Caspian complains about hearing voices in his head and asks for psychiatric help. I've got to try and find out if you're someone that plays mind games. Mind games. Mind games. Mind. Whether you try and suss folk out and wind them up and see what buttons you can press. <laughs> yeah? No, we're serious, all right. And I might ask you questions that get you angry. Yeah, yeah. You are allowed to be angry. What you're not allowed to do is be violent. I am a violent person, miss. I am a... Mm -hmm. I, I, look at my record. Yeah. Since I was 11 and 10, I've been in Chun's own man. I've always been restrained. I've bit him. I, bit, I was only 11 and I bit, I bit one man's chest open. I bit Mrs. ear, and I was always getting restrained in and out of Chun's homes. And I always had that, that, that same feeling, man. I have a feeling inside that my fate is that I am going to kill someone. Does the prospect of going out, doing something like that, and then coming back to jail on Depends. a life, or if it's serious enough on a whole life, does that bother you? Depends, miss. Depends. When I'm in the mall, no. I don't give a shit, you get me, but... I don't think I'm a nutcase yet, but I think I'm, I'm like, if I carry it, if I don't get help now, then I'm gonna end up, end up being a nutcase, innit? I am not 100% convinced that he is actually mentally ill. He is certainly mentally disordered. Because not only does he have the violent thoughts, I mean, lots of people have violent thoughts, and that isn't good, but it's not a major problem. He has the enjoyment of violence to go with those thoughts and to feed those thoughts and to feed the fantasies. And I think his behaviour may well lead to someone's death. Liam Brennan, one of the three accused of taking a prisoner hostage, has asked for a meeting with his lawyer to prepare his defence. Our plan was to just go and grab the kid, keep him there, close the door. It's my duty to not play down the offending, but to try and get an insight into why it happened, how it happened, what your involvement was. Not to absolve yourself from any liability, not to say, look, I didn't do anything. Now, there's a range of sentences, as you know. I'm hoping that the district judge won't be, um, won't have in his mind that additional days are necessary. I can't for hope. Yeah. Because I haven't spoke to her mum or the baby for like over a year. Yeah. And she just got in contact like a few days ago. Mm -hmm. And I want to be out for that. And I told her I'm out like the 11th of December 2013. The Crown Prosecution Service decided not to prosecute Brennan. So he now faces an internal hearing. Sit down, Mr. Brennan, please. I'm a judge, nothing to do with the prison. Do you understand that? Yeah. Well, I think you're represented today by Mr. Hammond. That's right, is it? So, yes. Can you identify yourself, officer? Officer Hartman. And you're the reporting officer? Yes. So, on the 29th of May, it said you detained a person against his will. Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Mr. Hammond? What was the most amount of involvement that you saw Mr. Brennan do? He spent a lot of time talking to me at the door about why they were there, what their intentions were. I, I, I don't wish to put any words in your mouth, but I'm suggesting to you that he didn't threaten any force or use any force. 
upon Mr. When you were in there, did you make it abundantly clear to Mr. Harper that you were happy to cooperate with... Well, you're leading you, aren't you? I am. Well, don't, please. You're aware of the law about joint enterprise, and uh, it's rather like the getaway driver in a bank robbery. He's still nonetheless guilty of an offence of robbery, although he doesn't actually go into the bank and help himself. Mr Brennan apparently had no physical contact with this other prisoner who was apparently being detained. Did you see either of the other two having hold of Mr... I never seen me. My eyes never seen no one holding. How big's the cell? Smaller. The prison cell. Well, I find it absolutely inconceivable that you can say that... You're saying that that, that didn't happen then? I'm not because saying it that. couldn't have happened without you seeing it, could it? I'm not saying it didn't happen. All I'm saying is I never seen it with my eyes. I was the opposite way. As you've heard of Mr Harper, I was speaking to Mr Harper for, a, for quite a long period of time. It's totally and absolutely clear to me that you three were all in this together and don't have any hesitation in finding you guilty. I impose 32 additional days. Do you understand all of that? I understand. Thank you. These proceedings are finished. Thank you. Why do you think it never got mentioned in there that the guy was stripped and threatened with rape? That yeah, surprised me. Yeah, it surprised me, but, you know... <laughs> Happy days, innit? <laughs> the police did not proceed with criminal assault charges because the hostage was too frightened to testify. When prisoners are in segregation, privileges, including television, are withdrawn. Huh? What's that? Brennan is refusing to go back to his cell unless he's given a TV so he can watch the England versus Ukraine football match. I can't hear you. Already sent to the I down here for another two weeks, yet. Yeah. I was telling all that. So obviously, I might as well just get in more trouble. Just... I don't want to see you down here for any longer than you need to, because actually, you're quite decent. I am. I would rather go and get you some activity pack or some painted by numbers or uh, ask education for that. something. We'll get you settled. That's me, Liam Brennan, yeah, asking for education. That never happened since I was 11 years of age. And I'm asking for education, if that's our boarding. Michelle eventually manages to make Brennan see the sense of returning to his cell. For his part in the hostage-taking, Caspian has 38 extra days added to his sentence. The officers try hard to reason with him, but he refuses to return to his cell. He'll be held in segregation until the governor decides it's safe for him to associate with the other prisoners. If you do not follow instructions, yeah, you will be restrained again. Do you understand? OK? No one will ever be the system. There's a regime, there's procedures, there is laws that you have to follow, whether you're a prisoner or you're a prison officer. No one will ever beat this system. On the outside, you class an 18-year-old as an adult. In here, they haven't matured into adults. Some can be easily influenced by others. They can get themselves in trouble. Yeah, they're popping back on the wing. I'm not, I'm not in the light. I'll tell you now, I'm going to hurt someone. Serious, I'm not fucking about no more. They put me back on the wing, I'm not gonna mess about with these little shitty fucking hostages. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurt someone real, real good. Serious, man, I'm gonna hurt someone proper. And I just, yeah, just whew, split personalities, man. They're pissing me off, everything, everyone, everything. He's been like, I need to speak to someone, man. My head's up my ass. My head even feels big, mate. My head feels rah. Like, I've got so much shit going on in my head, yeah. Like, I just feel. I feel like, I feel mad. There are people who I think I don't want to see them out in the community for a very long time. And we may at times be working with people actually just to help them cope with being in prison. But I have never met anyone that 
I didn't feel that there was something that we could do to help them respond to the environment they're in in a more positive way. Caspian Hogg's mental state continues to be monitored. What other treatment do you think you need? What other treatment? What else do you think that I can do that's going to help you? Nothing. I don't think there's anything else, though. Really, really, really. Anyway. Do you think you need things like um, to learn more about your emotions, about how to control your emotions? No, nah, I don't think I need to work on emotions, really, no. Because I know what they are, they're just not there, if you get what I'm saying. I'll try and cry and it won't crap in. I can't cry or anything like that, unless I'm in like, I'm already crying if you, and it just comes out of nowhere. You're one of them ones like, you know what I mean, innit? I can't, if something emotional happens, I won't cry. Sometimes I laugh if something bad happens. Is it more normal for you to think about people's feelings or to not think about people's feelings? Depends when you get me. Now, this is me, yeah, I'm sat and chatting to you on a level, yeah, saying that I do like you, you get me, but if you caught me on another day where I'm in a mad mode, yeah, because some, like I was saying, with that vision, yeah, then that's when it is. I don't look at things right, man, I look at things in a different, psychotic way. And since I've been a kid, I've never been one, I've never wanted to be a policeman, a fucking anything, you get me? I've always had this, this, even since being eight and nine and seven, like, I always wanted to kill people. And my dad ended up getting murdered when I was about six. And it's crackers, man, it's sending me, like, it's all fun, like, fuzzing round and shit in my head, man. On Thursday? Yeah. Got an appointment to see the psychiatrist? Yeah, that's nice. Yep. Nice. I don't know what time it's going to be. Yeah. It is possible that he'll prescribe you some medication. Yeah. I'll be happy if he gives it me, but if he doesn't give it me, then obviously, I'm, I feel, like, like, mad in it. Mm, so it'll piss you off. Yeah, it'll piss me off, it? My personal belief is that we're not born evil. We learn from our environment and from the world around us how to react to that world. And if there are some people who learn that the best way to act with the world around them is through aggression or violence, Special daddy, how much do I love you? And then when you open it like and it says, this much, you get me? Because his father was murdered when he was six, Caspian is very conscious of his role as a parent. I don't want my son to grow up and be put in situations that I've been put in. Do you know what I mean? Like, now I'm older, like I was 14 when he had him, you know what I mean? I wasn't... I wasn't all there. I was always blazing weed, grafting, doing stupid stuff. And it, oh, that was, I was a kid still, so I was kiddish things were still going on in my head. Now I'm maturing and I've got to take responsibility for my son. And I want him to learn, I want him to see set things like, do you know, so, do you know what I mean? So he's, 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 he's smart up here and I don't want him to be in situations that I'm in, like down the block in London, or even being in prison or having to commit crime, I want to be there for him so he can either speak to me, he can come to me for money, he can, when he needs, no, do you know what I mean? I, I, I want to be a dad to my son, that's what it is. It's, it's like them three letters, yeah, it's, it's about being a dad. It's fucked up, isn't it? Kind of like not seeing him and that, really and truly, but just have to hold your head down and just keep it up. As long as you speak to him and phone him and that, then it's all right. Devon was just 15 when his son was born. At the time, yeah, I didn't really want a kid, but it just happened, innit? She was t talking to me a lot about it, and I just said to myself, you know what, might as well have a kid at my age, innit, car? You never know when someone's gonna take your life or you don't know when you're gonna go, so it's best to have it early than, than late. Are you serious? Does that cross your mind that you might end up getting murdered or killed or something? Yeah, obviously, car, in my hood, there's a lot of violence, innit? Like people dying in that, innit? You never know, you can walk across the road and they can run you over, innit? For some prisoners, telephone is the only way for them to keep in touch with their children. Uh, daddy's missed you, yeah? No, you can't see me now. Daddy's busy, yeah? Daddy's busy feeding all types of animals. I don't know how this goes, and I don't want to set it up wrong and then say, fool on someone. Or something. In the prison chapel, Josh is helping prepare for a special Father's Day occasion when well behaved prisoners will be allowed to spend time with their children. I can hear I can get on the floor and roll around with him, I can play, run around, I can chase him. See, on a visit, he always wants me to chase him. 
but you can only get so far before I have to say I can't get up, do you know what I mean? To be with him for a good five hours, through the fun, the crying, on a wrestling him so bad, it's grabbing. Thank you for your mouth. Well done. I don't like it that he comes here and he knows how to be searched, but I'd rather have that relationship with him. I've got something to change for. I mean, I've got a kid and a fiance and a family that, that want me to, to be there, kind of thing. Be honest, if I didn't have my kid and I didn't have my fiance, then I don't think I'll probably be as good as I have been. <gasps> Come here, my little boy. I've got them, I've got them to look after. I mean, they're counting on me getting out. Put your cape. Yeah, you can put it in. Oh, you're being a pussycat. <laughs> if I'm good, I get everything back. <gasps> It's easy, you know what I mean? If I'm good, I get it. If I'm not, I don't. A little bit of your bottle. Don't be cheeky, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I miss his first time he kicked a football, the first time he's running around, first time he said a sentence. I've missed taking him to the park, I've missed him coming out of nappies, now he goes to the toilet, now he's a big boy, he thinks. Do you know, it's things like that, just everything. I've missed everything. I want to be there to put him to sleep, to wake up with him. Do you know what I mean? He sneaks into his mum's bed at night. I want to be there when he does that. Right, ladies and gentlemen, do you want to start us all about saying your goodbyes then? Yeah. You're right. <laughs> when I first knew I was coming to prison, I thought that he'd forget about me. We was only 18. We had been together for like three years, two and a half years. But this is a big test on teenagers to be loyal and, and faithful as well, especially. When you're in jail, stuff like that goes around in your head. That's all you think about. So you need someone that you trust, really trust, to be able to get through it. Otherwise, it tears you apart. I could sit in there every night and think she's cheating on me, she's cheating on me. See ya. Love you. Specialist dogs have been called into Aylesby prison to hunt for drugs and other contraband items. A lot of drug dealers in prison and they want to continue. There's a lot of money to be made for selling the drugs. Mobile phones are just a bigger problem. That's why the dogs are trained to find them. It could be used for planned escapes. All sorts of crime events could be used with the mobile phone. We search cells on a daily basis and we'll find find stuff on a daily basis. Right, we'll step outside your cell. As soon as they see the dogs, we can have people running for cover. The prisoners are removed from their cells to let the dogs work without being obstructed. How do you know he's found something? Uh, he'll freeze and just nudge it with his nose or just put his nose on it. Uh, if he can't can get to it, but you can still pick up the scent and just sit and look in the general direction. It's showing a lot of interest in there, but I'm just looking at the window, see if it's anywhere around the window. At least flick the end of the spliff out the window. That window area and that bed area, that's where he keeps going back. Why I come sleeping and then you're bringing a dog in my throat, going above my stuff like that. It's lost, bro. Our team of searchers are now actually going to uh, carry out a search throughout the cell to see what the actual dog was indicating on. Dog indicating a certain area, so they'll concentrate on that area first. And hopefully, we'll find something. The dogs continue going through all the cells on the wing. And when you open it, you can smell it. Yeah, they'll definitely be smoking cannabis. It's whether he indicates in here or not. Yeah, you can smell it. Yeah, there's drugs and phones all over, John. You know? People used to hide their shit in the sink, like undo the screws here, the nail clippers or whatever, just put it in there. So that, that's all I'm telling you. Like. <laughs> when you've got a phone, you can call whoever you want, text whoever you want, you can have nighttime one day views of your missus on the phone, you see what I'm saying? Like, talk about whatever you want, sort shit out, sort your money out, sort your business out involved. Have you ever had a phone inside? Yeah. It's power, it's too, I've got rid of it, it's too power, too power, 
way too paranoid. No matter what they will get, the first time here they got away with, ah, yeah, cops can't find my shit. Second time, can't, but you know the cops ain't getting my shit. Third time, come, your blood, they come close, you know, man, they palm it off on someone. As soon as they palm it off on that person, that person's gonna get spun. Next week, boom, someone else got spun. Can't relax because these girls have intelligence. They do, they haven't been known to hide mobile phones in there. On the basis that we won't go in because it's, uh, very dirty. The SIM cards, phones, anything, you name it, they'll try and hide it. And we're usually three steps behind because once we find the place, they're looking for another one. Broken aerial can be made into a prison shank. If it, so we'll take that, it's not attached to the stereo. A lot of them like looking at pictures, of course. There's a lot of self abuse going on. <laughs> We went into the cell and inside this one, mobile phone charging paraphernalia. So we sent the teams back in to, um, to check them again. We found a few little things and more importantly for me, it's uh, been about asserting our control and letting prisoners know that we can do this whenever we feel like, like doing it. And it's interesting to see some of the reactions of some of the prisoners who clearly didn't like the idea that we're actually going to have a dog go around the cell. Five weeks after taking a prisoner hostage, Liam Brennan is returned to his old cell. That's not a problem, we can get that, that's not a problem. When the pits are in my babies and that, that's not right, that is it. Hey, what's oh, that? What's that? You actually well, scared me. the problem? If you've got a problem with me taking that kid hostage, you come in and do something. Liam. Like I just told you to when you was by yourself. Liam. Otherwise, fuck off. I think this is all acceptable. Pitch is wet, and the boxes and socks wet. And he tries to tell me that's acceptable. The cell would have had to be searched. I think that that's a sit. That is a sit. Come on, be serious. So that was stuck the, together, next, the next day, that you know that padlock that you saw in your cell, yeah. that would have been put on there, and we have not unlocked that this cell for There'll five be more weeks. More problems in there. You're just gonna start chucking things back on my face. I wasn't here, I don't know it? what was said, but is there any point getting in more trouble? No, obviously you not. You've just literally I'm gonna let you come on here. Tell me. That, that, that's just a fine. I know, but you've literally just come on here. The best thing is to do is to keep your head down. At the end of the day, the impression that staff have got who have just come on this wing to work is that you're Liam Brennan, you've taken another prisoner hostage, and you've caused problems down the set, gogging off. Oh. That is the only impression staff have of you. Do you see what I mean? They keep going on about how staff disrespect them, staff speaks to them rudely, but it goes the other way. You speak to us rudely, you disrespect us, and you want us to tiptoe around you like, like you're a child and try and teach you the ways of prison when actually you're 18, 21. You should, you should know how to be an adult, you should know how to respect people. Good behaviour can lead to prisoners being moved closer to home. When I ring Tasha in the morning, I hear seagulls and stuff. And then when I go to Lewis, it should be out on the road, and it'll be like we're under the same sky now. That's what it feels like, do you know what I mean? We're, we're at the same place, I'll be able to see or hear the same things she's hearing. I still feel that I'm going home soon. Josh will finish his sentence near his family. Keen to stop his violent behavior and get back home, Caspian has agreed to take antipsychotic medication. Stops whatever's going on in my head, isn't it? It's working. I end up in ways, not properly. I wake up in the morning with pure mad dots on the pillowcase, where I've been slavering at night time. And I got a pillow, man, I forgot about that as well. Do they make you feel better, though? Are they stopping the thoughts? Yeah, they are stopping the thoughts in ways, but it's the way they make you feel. I like that feeling of being a bit like twisted, yeah, but this it makes you like 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 a mad medicated weirdo. <laughs> like it's some sick medication that they've got me on. It's not good. The violent fantasies, the violent thoughts, the wish to commit particular murders to become notorious for them have now diminished greatly and he, he's actually reporting that those thoughts have gone to the extent that sometimes he feels his head is just empty. What I would be hoping to do with him now 
is work with him so he can recognize what was happening and if he feels violent thoughts coming back, what he can do to gain help at that time. 90% of the prisoners we get here, they just knuckle down, do what we ask them to do, the odd blips here and there, and that's it. But there's the remaining ones that are the ones that really are the problem ones for us and probably cause 90% of our issues. They just don't want to settle down. They're constantly rebelling against what we want them to do. They're constantly trying to arrange things to happen in the jail and trying to disrupt what we're trying to do. We have some lads in this prison, they are, their crimes are so horrific um, that they may never get out. I've done 10 months in prison now and I've still got 27 years and two months left. Not a lot shocks me anymore. You say no, they have a hissy fit. You say no, they'll turn around and say I want to smash your face in. I'm telling you bro, when I see you, I'm going to slash your throat, you Oh man! If you put a dog in a cage, it's not going to get better, do you know what I mean? You can't just leave someone in a room expecting to change overnight or over 10 years. It's not going to happen. You have to teach them. That's why it's called rehabilitation. Welcome to hell. The authorities at Aylesbury Prison have to try to manage some of the most dangerous and disruptive 18 to 21 year olds in the country. One minute you might be with a shield going into a cell to take a weapon off somebody. The next minute you might be breaking news to somebody that somebody nearest and dearest has got something awful happen to them uh, and everything in between. The prison officers, we come in here and we're trapped in this little world that all morals and principles are completely different. For example, the big boys in this jail, the ones that have committed serious, horrible offences, who have been violent in jail, have a lot of respect of the rest of the prison population. When they get their reputation, they then disrupt the prison service, disrupt the daily running of the prison. A lot of them are violent, and just bringing them in, into prison doesn't switch that off. It's just a way that they've been brought up or where they would choose to adopt when they interact with people. So yeah, it can be a in very intimidating environment at times. We've had a number of staff assaulted in the last couple of weeks. Let's go backwards, eh? Let's go backwards. The prisoner has assaulted an officer okay. after refusing to follow orders. The attacker is taken straight to the segregation block. Who's doing the search? Who's doing the search? If you don't follow the staff and listen to the staff, I will instruct them to restrain you under restraint and we'll take clothes off for you. The prisoner refuses to give up his clothes, which may contain DNA evidence from the assault. People don't always do what we want them to do. They've always been the big man in the gang or whatever. And we've got to actually say, no, within this prison, it's a mini society. Shut your mouth, man. Shut your mouth. Like I said, with the attitude you're displaying, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be doing? Yes, sir. We're not living in a utopia where we think we'll be able to cure everything, but it's just small steps to just try and get people to interact with people in an appropriate way that it isn't appropriate to either assault them or verbally abuse them. When a member of staff is assaulted, particularly if it's a bad assault, you almost take it personally, because even though we work in a different department, 
we all work as a team and your instinct in that situation is to go to that person that is bleeding all over the place and if that's a member of staff your instinct is to go to that person actually we're here for the prisoner so if the prisoner is restrained it does put you in a bit of an awkward position and sometimes it is difficult to say actually no you need to call an ambulance for that member of staff because I need to be here with that prisoner that almost sits wrong with you as a nurse officers are permitted to use reasonable force to defend themselves when attacked in 2012 35 members of staff were assaulted at Aylesbury 16 needed hospital treatment I've had fights with officers loads of times in Chelmsford, Bedford, Woodhill. I'm banned from all them jails and they sent me here. I had a bit of trouble here when I first come here. It's fucked up. I was doing, I was, I was doing all right. I, just, I was boxing and that on the out, innit? And I was doing all right at it. And then I fucked up by coming in here. I've lost my license now. I'll never, never be allowed to box again. Never. So I don't even know, I don't even know what the fuck I'm going to do when I get out. Some of the staff assaults we've had in the establishment are horrendous. And you watch, watch them back and you, you, you got to say some of them are really lucky to keep their lives. A female officer has been attacked. So are you alright? What's happened? My head button needs to play someone, I don't know. And that's been the real change for me, the propensity for prisoners to assault female staff, because it used to be very much the taboo, and you'd expect a prisoner backlash from their peers if they assaulted a female member of staff. Yeah, I always shake after stuff. My legs, my legs are the first one to go. And then we get... right, I'm going to give you the opportunity to walk to the segregation unit. Any messing around, the staff will be instructed to really restrain you, and then you've blown your opportunity, yeah? Agreed? Yep. Yeah. Staff in other countries, they carry guns, they carry tasers. We carry nothing. While they're content and while they're happy, they're not kicking my head in. And that's what I don't think the public actually realise. They, they moan about prisoners have got televisions, prisoners have got playstations, prisoners have got um, trainers, all the things. But what they don't see is while they've got their privileges, they're not kicking the start of it. And that's the only from, from our point of view. And we give them a telly, but we can easily take it off them. We deal with young men who are not very good at communicating, can't articulate their emotions. Yeah, they can be abusive. We know that, and that's not acceptable. We know that's not acceptable. And I may go and do a seg round, and then someone opens the door and they'll say something about your mother and about your kids and threaten to want to kill you. But then on Tuesday, if I go back to that cell and almost bear gr grudges about the fact that, oh, he showered at me and he was, he was aggressive, then actually, how are we actually going to have a word with them? It's not just aggression toward themselves that officers have to deal with. This prisoner is trying to hang himself. Stop, 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 stop. Once the noose is cut, officers have to restrain Ryan Buckley to prevent him from continuing to self-harm. Get him down. Put him on the floor. One of the biggest things of being a prison officer nowadays, obviously, is to do care. You know, myself and my colleagues have inputted a lot of time and effort into this kid, to be honest with you. But at the minute, there's no talking to him. He's he's just unresponsive, yeah. definitely showing bizarre tendencies. I just want to have a look at your neck, Brian. <coughs> You're not going to get one out of chat or anything? Brian. Yeah, let them see very quickly. I'm all right. Sure? Yeah. I just want to have a look, Brian, and then I'll be... Calm down, and then I can make no chat you. Have you got any injuries? We're playing a very dangerous game. He can be bloody-minded, Ryan, and I think he could he could be an accident waiting to happen. You know, all right, it was the self-strangulation that he ended up getting restrained, but I think in the mindset that he's got, I don't think he cares, really. My biggest fear is, obviously, Ryan is out in less than 12 months. It's just a case of looking after him, and hopefully he comes out of this distressful period. There's an officer staring at him 24 hours a day, which I personally wouldn't want anyway. Those considered suicide risks are carefully monitored. When he was down there crying, don't you know, the mother instinct kicks in, and he looks like all he needs a really big hug, and for somebody to tell him it's all right. You do just want to do it. 
I need somebody, son. You don't come and talk to me then, Ryan? After his failed suicide attempt, officers are keen to prevent Ryan Buckley trying again. He's got quite a hefty ligature mark around his neck and a small abrasion at the back. Um, he has got cuts on his arms as well that I think were opened up again when he was restrained, but without his consent to do anything, there's not really a huge amount that I can do. If he changes his mind later, I'll come back. But he's just not in the right frame of mind at the moment, I think, to be seen. Ryan? Ryan, you really need to try and calm down. You obviously support him and you obviously intervene if he, you know, if he's putting things around his throat, but he's hell-bent on killing himself. He, he, he seems to enjoy cutting himself. Um, you know, like I said, the staff have been in several times already this morning. We've had lots of different items that he's used, tops of lighters, bits of pen. He had several razor blades uh, on the weekend. He was searched and he still provided a razor blade later on. Um, Ryan will find anything to, to cut himself with. Ryan has moved out of his cell, so it can be searched for any items he may use to self-harm. I'm just uh, replacing the bedding with anti because it doesn't tear. So he's even in his own clothes for that. He can't um, try even hanging himself with it. Yeah. Everything, absolutely what everything. Out of his cell. With that piece of lighter there, he's taken the metal bit off the top, and what he does with that then is he snaps it, so it's got a sharp corner, I've got his other and then he drives it into his arms. Taking the soap out because he's trying to eat it. If you unravel that lots of times, you can hide bits of razor blades and stuff like that, and this will take it out completely. So you always give him a new one so he can. Yeah, it's a new one. Yeah. Um, we've taken his bedding out, taken the laces out of his trainers because we haven't got slippers. So at the moment, he's got nothing. You know, when you're dealing with a lad who's in crisis. You're constantly watching out for the potential of suicide, and you know there's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than going home at five o'clock in the evening and saying good luck to everybody, and you know laughing and smiling about a good day, and coming in the next day or getting a phone call in the middle of the night saying, you know, young Johnny's hung himself. They just cut him down. You know, it is it's horrendous. And it's the worst thing that that any of us have to go through, isn't it? You know. You never know when anything's going to happen. And you do see some things that are quite horrific. I've probably cut down about 20 prisoners that have hung themselves. Um, one of those was dead. But as long as, you know, you, you, it's, you, you, learn, you learn to deal with it. You learn to... Um, you learn to deal with it when it happens and then forget it very shortly afterwards. Because if, you, if, you, if it played on your mind, you wouldn't kind of work. It's saying you're mad. An alarm is triggered on Sea Wing. Emerali Oxy has pushed aside an officer and attacked a maintenance worker. He, he needs to calm down. If he can't continues the way he's in prison, he will never get out of prison. I've been in situations where I know him really well and I find if anyone could de-escalate him, then it could be possibly me. Because he's a likeable person. He just has this other side of him. 
Jekyll and Hyde, if you like. Come on. The red mist just comes up. His eyes are, are bulging. You can see the rage in him, but he just can't control himself. But he's a very strong young man, very fit. In the heat of the moment, I think he could lash out at anybody. And it don't matter who you are, I think if, even if his parents walked in, I don't think I'd even calm him down. He was in that rage. Mental health worker Liz Magnus checks on Oxy's condition. Oxy, you want to talk? Can't open up at the moment because there's no staff and there's someone out on the phone. So, we're back to seeing you properly Monday, yeah? not Monday, wrong day, Friday. You're going to keep your phone? No right person in their head will push two officers out of the way and go and to go assault someone, isn't it? If they haven't done anything. Unless you're not all there in your head, isn't it? Obviously, he's done something to me, yeah? He's come to my door trying to wind me up. I told him he called me a pussy, works called me a pussy, and all that. And he was like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What do you mean it doesn't matter? Come on, let's all come to reality now. It does matter, yeah? Because he's not supposed to be doing that, isn't it? He's not supposed to be doing that. He really is not supposed to be doing that. What we actually have from Oxy is our noted escalation in behaviour. Although there have been a number of aggressive incidents since he's been here and he's spent a fair amount of time down at the psych unit, up to now he has damaged property. This is the first time he's made a direct assault on a member of staff, which although he has done in the past in other establishments, it's an, it, it is new for Aylesbury in the time that we've had it in Aylesbury. Um, he acknowledges that when I spoke to him about it just now and he is, all he's saying about it is he wants it to get him a transfer to another prison. Young Oxy wants out of the establishment. The problem is he has a little bit of stability and then he has um, moments where he then gets disruptive and assaulting individuals, whether that's staff or prisoners. He's assaulted a member of the works team. So again, now while we're communicating to other jails, we've got to add that on to his record that he's gone on assault on another member of staff, so it's going to be difficult to move on. As it currently stands, eight establishments have been ranked, and this morning, prison number nine has said no, which was felt. Are you trying to say that nine people want to? Nobody, nobody wants you. It's been really tr truthful because what they're saying is, why do I want a young man who potentially is a bit of a nightmare? There's something kick ticking in your little head somewhere that makes you just lose it. Mm. And what you need to do is find out what that is and do something about it, innit? Yeah. All right, mate. Nice one. Yeah. See you later. Oxy, got about a minute left and I'll throw you in a shower. Yesterday, I just don't know what got into me, innit? But I feel even more angry now, cos... Shit my nose, yeah. Fucked up my face. Just, it just makes me feel like, why shouldn't I do that to them? You know what I mean? So done. So I think I'll just carry on doing it. I'll just keep doing it. You know? I'm not making it easy for them, innit? Simple. It's visiting time at Aylesbury. That's the only thing I look forward to, really, is a visit. There's nothing else really to look forward to in here, is it? I mean, banged up, basically, for 15 hours a day. Lewis Bibby's girlfriend, Jess, visits him once a week. Do you have an eyebrow? Yeah. <laughs> you can't really do much in a visit, you know what I mean? Kisses and cuddles are enough for me, you know what I mean? Enough for me, for her just coming to see me, that's what I like. I'm happy, you know what I mean? So it's good. As soon as we get out, then, then we can take her to the bedroom, you know what I mean? I've got nine months left. Lewis Bibby. Yeah. Yeah, right, I'm back. Thank you. Bibby got to know Jess after writing to her as a pen pal. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Sure? Yeah. Good. That's what you're talking about. Huh? <laughs> Looks like I can't kiss you today. Oh, sure. <laughs> Stop being horrible. You've been, no, been good. Don't take the piss. 
sort of met this girl and I actually care about someone for like the first time in my life. We ended up getting together about two months ago. I asked her to marry me in like the first couple of weeks. But she said, yeah. Like, when she said that, I thought it was the first time anyone's actually believed me, you know what I mean? Behaving yourself then. Being a good boy. Huh? Being a yeah. good boy. Being good. You haven't because you're not looking at me, and that's when I know you're lying. <laughs> no, it's because you're you making don't me look laugh. At me. Before we met this girl, you know, all I used to think about was crime and that, you know what I mean? I had a mad old life, you know what I mean? Since the age of eight and that. I was like 12 when I got an ass boy. First of all, when I got nicked, I think I got nicked for about 14 burglaries, you know, my whole life, you know what I mean? I've done about 600, 700 burglaries, you know what I mean? And you know, now I've got a. Uh, I'm 100% out of world change, you know what I mean? Because I don't want to let her down. Like, that's what love is, isn't it? You know what I mean? Got a lot of stuff to look forward to. Finished college, proud of me. Yeah, I'm proud well of you. Well done, Jess. So you better get a job easy now, <laughs> No. Hey, you would. Mm, get a job easy. Got to get her a ring, though. Get a job in that when I get out. Give her kids in that. Have a little bibby running around and all <laughs> Oh. See you Wednesday, yeah? Mm-hmm. Or Thursday. <laughs> Which one? Uh, Wednesday, if you can, but if not, Thursday. Okay, I'm going. I'll Love speak you. to you later. Love you more. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Is it enough? No. Oh. Never is, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Once a week, it's not enough. It's just when I kiss her and I get this mad old rushy feeling down my body, you know what I mean? And then when she has to go, you know what I mean? Like, I feel, I feel like crying all the time, you know what I mean? Obviously, I, I, cry, I cry myself all the time, and I'm like a little baby, you know what I mean? But, like, see, you, you see some people say, like, when you cry and that, you're meant to feel better after, but I don't, you know what I mean? I still feel like shit, <laughs> you know what I mean? But... It's not a good thing to say, oh, yeah, my boyfriend's in prison, but can't help you for who you like, can you? I suppose. I don't think that I'm that naughty, really. I don't. I, I just do the little things, you know what I mean? Like, I think I think naughty is where someone fucking goes out and stabs someone and things like that. I, I, I think that's naughty, but, like, robbing cars and that, I don't know. That's, that's, that's petty, really, you know what I mean? It's not as bad as what other people do, so... I don't do good boys, ever. <laughs> I had a good boy, and then just, They're too good. You have to have a bit of bad in them, always. They haven't been together that long. And it seems that all his focus is on this this one young person, and she is his life. You know, he's already said how he plans to marry her when he gets out. We've got to be mindful that she's a young girl. Things happen. She's outside. She's got the opportunity to meet other people. You know, it has been known relationships break down in no matter what shape or form, wherever you are. So for us, if that happens, then we've got you know a massive crisis on our hands. Considering he's showing the type of behaviour he's already showing. Uh, to do with Jess. If I didn't have her, then I wouldn't see no point in living. But obviously, like, now I've got, uh, I've got things to look forward to, you know what I mean? My dad hates it. My mum says she'll give him the chance when he gets out. My dad ain't too keen on it. He don't know him, though, does he? So maybe if he gets to know him, it might be all right, hopefully. Otherwise, I'm in trouble. <laughs> And I'll either see him on Wednesday or Thursday. <laughs> I think some of my mates on the wing get a bit fed up with me, you know what I mean? Because that's, that's all I'm talking about. I don't really talk about anything else. All yeah. I do is talk about her. You've got to believe that people can change, because that's the end result. That we're all in this business to protect society whilst people have got custodial sentences and look after them. But we've got to do something with them. We expect them to work. We expect them to better themselves. We expect them to take responsibility for their actions as best as we can and get them into a situation where at the end of their custodial sentence they can actually get out there and get some employment, training or education and there's a high chance that the person won't be coming back. Prisoners can train as chefs here. The food in here is beautiful. Spanish on the yeah? Don't give it too much. Always are very good, very polite. Serve you well, they become uh, far more mature than when they are on the wing. Hey, Buckley, did you apply for the mission? Although Buckley has a history of self harming with sharp objects, he's given a chance to work in the kitchen. Yeah, I feel a lot happier now. I've got the decision what job I'm in now. Which obviously start from the bottom and work your way up, really. Which I don't mind, it keeps me busy. 
There are things in here that self-harmers could put around their body so they can take it back to their cells if they want to. So clearly I have to keep an eye on him and keep a close management control of him so that it's not given the opportunity to take that stuff. But if you treat him in the right way, he should be able to respond to that. The target and the incentive for him is to do the right thing. So he's therefore then, when I look at it in two or three weeks' time, met all the criteria I wanted, and then he can then get the best job in the, in the, the staff mess, which is in the wash-up. So you just clean it off from the sky and I'll get you all that now if you want to. So right in prison, when you've got all these people around to help you, all these courses you can do, all these cooking degrees, it's when you get outside them gates with your bags and you're, you're basically thrown back into the community. There's not a lot of people there to help you. And I don't want to go to the hostel. hostel. The simple fact is that you've got drug users in a hostel, then I've got more chance of offending. Even if I've got a, a full-time job as a chef, I've still got people smoking drugs in front of me and I'm going to be back in prison. I can say no, but when you're around that constantly, it's like in prison, if you're constantly around the wrong peers, you're going to get in trouble, fights, segregation unit, verbal warnings. Like all these boys, you get them down here, give them a bit more responsibility and they do seem to develop a little bit. And maybe that's good for him, I don't know. But he seems to be alright, he's doing the work. Now we've got a number of different tasks for him to carry out and I think he's working alright at it, so that's good. Prisoners provide the labour for most prison services, including the laundry. Finally got a job. I've been unemployed for about two months now. You know what I mean? So I've just been riding stiff bang up for like two months. Now I'm out my cell, you know what I mean? Like days are going a lot quicker. I've got just under a year left. All I can do now is just keep my head down, think about what I'm going to do when I get out. When I was out, I'd break into houses and that's all I actually done, you know what I mean? I was just like... I've never been to college, you know what I mean? So I've never actually done anything, you know what I mean? What kind of positive can rise from a tragedy? If this is what a negative can do, feels like my neck is in a noose from my ties to her majesty. Trying to stay alive with no strategy. Just trying to survive for my sanity. Her bashing starts your growth, but the lack of pussies already deprived my anatomy. Prisoners with musical ability are given the opportunity to express themselves. So I've been rapping before I even come to jail, but I never quite took it serious. It was just like something I could do, I could throw two lines together and make them sound good, but that was it. I never really took it serious. I don't know whether it was the predicament I was in that changed my whole mindset, but my rapping changed with it. And that since then, it's, it's just something I take very serious. Without this, I don't know what I'll do in jail. If I never like, had that escape, this is, this is how I escape it. Tuck the shackle down, I'll work the cuffs. I'm just trying to make it home before the feathers on my bird gets plucked. Life of Kenny Cornwall often takes out his frustrations on prison property. He had a disagreement over the way a sword was played, and then he just lost it, lost it at the end. He just went nuts, said, well, if I can't play pool, nobody's playing pool, and ripped the cloths. The rest of the lads won't be best pleased. There'll be nothing for them to do. It's a mess. Both tables, both tables ruined, so we're limited for association equipment now. We all had two tables for the biggest wing in the prison, so we've got none now. What's happened today? So no. you're breaking the huh? No. This guy is a nerd. He's scared for his life, so he ripped the table to go to the block. Dickhead, man. He's going to go to the block. I don't think the other prisoners will be too pleased with what he's done, so he's not particularly safe on the wing and just can't let him out, so I'll move him to the SEG unit anyway, and he wants to go. <laughs> I've got here is two pool cues, both of them smashed. We've seen how volatile some of the young men are here and the way they can turn in an instant. So that's why you've always got to be your guard, be careful, make sure everything's accounted for to stop staff or other prisoners being injured by weapons like these. I'm just... I'm, I'm this close to just fucking up a prisoner or something like that. And every time I try and get out of it, it's like another challenge comes along. Kenny, that's another thing. It's not just your way of dealing with things, and that's what you need to learn, though. 
There's a lot of people in life piss me off. I don't go around turning pool tables and smashing pool cues. It's that or just smash somebody's face and that's just going to get me even worse. It's going to get me even worse. Listen, that's not the only alternative, is it? Every time we get to this level, that's another added bit to your sentence. We start all over again. What's up, Oxy? In about ten minutes. Is that what you're on sale about for? Yeah. You're taking a piss. You feel like I've got to fucking smash someone's head in the game so they know that I'm not a fucking dickhead, innit? That was it. Oxy is back on Sea Wing after a stay in the segregation block for destroying his cell. Is unfortunately his history is that he ends up smashing up when he doesn't get his own way. We'll try and deal with it. Try to get through to him that is not the way to go. I would like to think we could get through to him. I'm always positive, but the truth of the matter is he probably will just smash up, go back down the seg and not break the cycle that he's in because he doesn't want to be at Aylesbury. He's a, he's a difficult prisoner and if I'm honest, personally, I don't think this environment helps him because it's why wise young offenders and a lot of them are immature. Oxy. Oxy is upset that he's still being punished with a loss of privileges, and Liz, the mental health worker, is trying to calm him down. When did you come back over? Today. What are you worried about? I took me over here with no telly, loss of soj, no burn, nothing. I want to go back to the block. And this is blocking, so I want to go back to the block. How much longer have you got on losses? Seven days. Seven days? And you can ride seven days, surely? Seven days. Where is the point in me being on a different unit but with the same circumstances? Where is the point? Having some human contact. With who? With who? Who are these people? Who are they to me? Do you feel like I care about anyone in here? I came to prison alone and I'm going to walk out alone. I don't want to know anyone in here. I don't want to know if I'm calling it. I want to get out of here and that's it. I want a cigarette. Can't I go have a cigarette? Can't I go get a Rizla? Why can't I go get a Rizla? I don't know, I'm just... Well, oh, asking certain officers, let me just go get a risen for the innit, so I can calm down and not let me go get a risen. What the fuck's all that about? It's like they want, it's because they want me to do something, innit? That's why, because they want me to do something. They're pushing my buttons. Do you genuinely believe that? But I want a risen, why is it so hard for me to go get a risen? Let me find out. Can we get the skin? No, no, I'm not running around getting risen. It's like I'm going to have to do something bigger for them to understand that I need to get out of here. If we need to would solve the problem, why can't we just give him a Rizla? We, we, we can't reward threats. We, we, we had him on weekend before cigarette. All week, he destroyed the city. Oxy's next move is to squirt washing up liquid under his door. Your history denotes that you're getting to a level where you are becoming unmanageable. So at the moment, we're having to manage you behind your door. And now you're behind your door, you're becoming even more unmanageable by creating a health and safety risk to everybody. He's now getting desperate. He specifically said that he runs this prison, he controls us, um, and he's, seen, he's very quickly learning that's not the case. So now he's doing desperate things to get attention. Hey, Marani! What's going on? You should not. What are you done for now? Calling someone a little girl. Calling someone a little girl? Mm. I can't believe you just went, you little girl. He's been told no f about a couple of things today which he doesn't like because he just thinks that he should be back up to where he was on D-Wing straight away. Okay, follow me, then we'll go this way. Oxy is escorted back to the segregation block once again. Oh, no, you all right? OK, so, have problems on the wing? He's now refusing to eat. All machines need fuel in there, especially highly tuned <laughs> sporting models. Why aren't you eating? I don't, I don't want to eat. You don't know why you're not eating. I don't want to eat. I don't want to. 
Is it as a protest? I don't want to eat. It's just because you're not hungry? Yeah, I just don't want to eat. Every day we'll encourage him to eat, we we'll try and talk with him. It, is, it does seem to be a protest, but um, we'll see, really. Um, I know Emirati does like his food, he does lots of exercise, so he needs his food. So hopefully, before three days are up, he'll start eating again. If I don't fucking eat, it's going to work. I'm going to go out of there. Simple. No, I it's the only way to do it. It isn't really an effective way of protesting, it never is. Never will, the prison still can't see to it, or everyone would just stop eating to get their own way. Come on, let's move down, come in. We've had a party. Boxy continues to raise the stakes. He's made a mess and blocked his toilet. In three years' time, where can you see yourself? Not out of here. Not out of here. Why not? Now, how do you describe jail? What's the one thing you have in your life that's going for you right now? One thing. The one thing you've got going for you right now is your age. You're young enough to change. You're young enough to get out. You're going to be, what, 22, 23 when you get to? Just so you live to your 70. You've got 47 years of this shit. Or you got 47 years on road. Because you decided to come in. But only you will decide if you come back. I'm a wanker. You love your mum, yeah? Yeah, of course. Next time you see your mum, you ask her, what's the last thing you think about when you go to bed at night? And what's the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning? And the answer's going to be you. So, how many of your mates or your boys went round to your mum's house and said to your mum, look, Oki's in jail. Will you go for bread? None. So what I would do if I was you, when I get out of jail in three years' time and you walk down the streets of Arbutia and your mates come up and see you, I'd tell them to fuck off. Some prisons you can rehabilitate. You know that some prisoners won't come back to prison, but the majority, sadly, they do. They do, it's the way, you know, they, they're brought up in um, deprived areas, they've got no education, they've got no job, they get out of prison, and there's no work out. There's no work out on the streets for young kids that have got um, qualifications, let alone a prisoner that comes out of prison, that's been in prison three, four years, and what have you done? Nothing. Less than 36 hours after starting to refuse food, Oxy changes his mind. So what happened to the hunger strike? Can't do it. Too fucking long. How long did it last? Um, day and a half. You're pretty good, aren't you? I eat much more than you on all of Do you know I'm coming out of insane? And I'm coming out insane. <laughs> <laughs> I come in here, my brain was fine. I was cool. I was a normal person. I'm leaving it fucked up. Ryan Buckley couldn't cope with his job in the kitchen and has become suicidal again. He said, Enough is enough, Cher. I need to say goodbye. And has asked me to do his funeral. And it's just dreadful. A young man who's not even 21 yet, with so much life ahead of him, but he's, he's so scared. He's so scared of coming out of prison and what he's got to face on, on, on the out, as they call it. He says he's, he's thousands of pounds in debt to the, to the drug dealers in Essex. I believe, personally, that he will actually go back on the heroin. I think, personally, he come off the methadone too quickly. Um, I asked him directly several months ago, and be fair to him, he was quite honest and open. He said that he will go back on the gear. And at the minute, he's actually looking for anything that he can use as a cell phone tool. What's he got in his... What's no, he's, he got? Pretty, he's just picking bits up off the floor. To harm himself, yeah. 
there's bits of plastic off of things. It'll be the the corner Poor of the boy. toothpaste tube. It's it's anything. Poor boy, he's he's just desperate, Jay. Mm. I mean, this morning he said goodbye to me. He said, I'm not going to see you again. I feel a bit sorry for him, to be honest, because he's, he's done so well, and I think that he's built some fantastic bridges with staff um, over the last few months, and he's got himself into the mess. He's got himself into a position where he seems happy all the time. And if he's happy and he's doing well, well, actually, that makes us quite happy, and it makes our job that little bit easier. To see him back here, we don't want to see him going down that cycle slope again and having to start again. Despite being watched as a suicide risk, Ryan's managed to find something to cut himself with. So what are we going to do with you? Ryan, what are you doing with the soap? Ryan. Ryan, what are you say? I know you don't need me here, but I'm not going anywhere, so... Um, I'm just... I'm sure you probably know this already, but eating the soap, all it's going to do is make you sick. Yeah. What a lot of lads do when they come into jail is the, is the, the rage stop the age they go into jail. So, you, say you come into jail at 14, you tend not to socially develop above the age of 14, because you're not in that social outlet, are you? So you tend to live your life, you know, and then after a few years you'll start to grow. So I don't know how long Ryan's actually been in, but he's, he's obviously at that level when he came in, because he's not... No. To see Ryan in such a state was distressing. He's, he's got a massive range of complex issues. Whether I and my team are suitably qualified to manage them, complex issues is questionable, but based on what we do as a living and within our experience, we can only do what we think is best at the time. Who did you do it with? Blood Blood Blood. Blood. Is it just this hand? Mm. Where else? Sadly, some people do actually find it so intolerable that they do get into a position where they would attempt to take their own life. We know those people very well. We've been pseudo-parents to them. And we've put huge care plans in place to manage them through that. We've got a, a young, you know, young prisoner who's on a constant watch at the moment because we feel his risk is too great that we have to have a member staff watching them all the time. It's all right. Keep pulling it. All right. After being treated for his cuts, Ryan Buckley tries to hang himself yet again. There was spit and snot everywhere. As much as it sounds quite gross, the only way that I could actually remove the ligature was to actually put my fingers into the skin of his neck, and I had to dig my fingers in in order to release a little bit of pressure so I could get the fish knife in. He had lost consciousness. His lips had gone blue. His eyes were bulging, so it really was a serious attempt. Officers revived Ryan and saved his life. And we've just got to do our best to resettle him, give him, try to provide him with everything that we can so that when he gets back in the community, he's not going to be a risk to, to anyone else. He's not going to, you know, create another victim somewhere, but maybe he also won't be a risk to himself, you know. But we're going to have to wait and see what happens, I suppose. In the segregation block, a prisoner has gone on a dirty protest. What's that, your bell's on? Huh? What's that? Oh, no, it's broken. It just, it just keeps coming up and on and it's still... Oh, I don't. Give us a shout if you want anything. The prisoner has been throwing his faeces out of his smashed observation flap. I can't bear the smell of that poo. I need some lavender. Next door to the dirty protester, Emerali Oxy has destroyed his cell once again. His jowls are shit on. Proper shit on. You know what I'm saying? Proper shit on. Don't get me wrong, people like us make it a shit on, innit? You know what I mean? In a sense, innit, yeah? But if the gods didn't move the way they did, yeah? The reason why I'm doing this, yeah? Because they fucked me up the other day, innit? Like, they literally fucked me up, innit? So I'll just get my own back, and I don't give a fuck. Simple. Most of the people who have undertaken dirty protests have not been mentally ill. They did it because it was what was going to cause the most repulsion. And it has been done that to make a very strong statement to the staff of displeasure at something that's been happening. 
team in protective clothing is sent in to end the dirty protest and enable the mess to be cleared up. The prisoner is moved into a special cell, which has nothing in it. Oxy chooses to come peacefully. I don't know what they must be thinking to do, innit? Like, they go, go outside and fucking have some sort of issue to be doing shit like that, man. My plan actually had been to see you in the interview room today, but I think that's kind of uh, mucked up. What can I say that's going to dissuade you from doing that? Hmm? I know you want the ship out, but you know there's not a great deal I can do about that. We have discussed it many times. I will represent your views for you. And I suspect people will be quite glad to see the back of you at the moment. But who's going to take you? We've got to instill a lot of things in people before they go out through the door and teach them some life skills and teach them, you know, explore options. With, you know, if somebody comes up to you and says, do you want some drugs? How are you going to handle that? Be honest with us. And, and yeah, it's just trying to give them that hope that things can change, that when they get outside it has changed, and they think, right, let's move on then. Well, I'm just trying to have a good day and today, and it's not going to... It's not going to work, I know it ain't, you know, it's just... During his time here, Ryan Buckley has spent 220 days under special observation to ensure his safety. Lewis Bibby is hoping to settle down with his fiancée, Jess, when he's released. <laughs> Emrali Oxy's continuing battle with the authorities has resulted in 576 days being added to his sentence.